in the first edition. This book is called L. Letter L. L is the sacred letter in the holy twelve-fold table, which forms the triangle that stabilizes the universe. See Libra 418, which of course is the Enochian ethos. And this is the holy table. So he's clearly, he's not mentioning um, Egypt or the pyramids or anything else. He's starting with, um, with, with Enochian and the holy table. And he also links these things explicitly with, explicitly with the tarot as well. So we're all in an area that's, you know, this is not what's really discussed, but this is what he says to start with. So we have to take this on board. Well, I'm not going to go through the holy table. Um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like because he mentions it. Uh, but just, just to br briefly, um, in the border, we have um, various Enochian letters which, from which you can uh, generate various tables of angels and spirits and things. Um, we have a hexagram in the background. Um, we have this square of 12, uh, the 12, a uh, three by four square, which you can also use permutations to create certain names from. And then we have these, there are seven of them in a circle here. And they are explicitly related to the planets and to the powers of those planets, which are not necessarily the ones that you're familiar with. As I say, this is, he must have used this in some way to, to create the Book of the Law. And one other thing about the Book of the Law, um, the title of the Book of the Law is actually from Freemasonry, and the Book of the Law means the Holy Bible. It's as simple as that. And Crowley, being a 33-degree Mason, would know this as well. So I'll just throw that out there. So he says, so, so first of all, he says, the first edition of this book is called L. L is the sacred letter, the holy 12-fold table, which forms the triangle that stabilizes the universe. Now this triangle, we can infer, is probably in, in the comments below, which says L is the letter of Libra, balance, and justice in the tarot. And he's, he's spelled Taro, T-A-R-O, which um, is the preferred spelling. Um, one of the reasons is, is that then you can turn those letters into Hebrew letters and you get the number 671, which is also the number of Adonai, the Lord, spelt out in full. Adonai is um, 65, you see. So then he sort of slightly prevaricates on things. This title should probably be L, L, as the L was heard of the voice of Iros, not seen. So L is the true name of the book for these letters, and their number is 31, form the master key to its mysteries. So the, the you know, um, key to the mysteries is... Um, is basically one of the um, Eliphas Levi books, isn't it? You see. So you can see there's some kind of referencing backwards to things as well. So before we go into the book, there's this Derry Gensis comment where he says, so, so there's three chapters basically in the book of the law. And he says, the first two chapters of this book describe ideas without limit. The third concerns a fixed event due to one union of them, namely the coming of Heru-Raha. Heru-Raha Heru is mentioned in the Sun Tarot card as well. So he says due to one union of them. So there clearly were other ones as well. Otherwise you just say a union, you see. So the first two chapters are knew it and had it. And then we get Rahul Kuit is the third chapter. So yeah, I actually have a question about yeah. that because um, like Crowley references the Bible quite a bit. Yes. Uh, uh, it, like ancient Egypt is mentioned in the Bible, but the yeah. Egyptian people don't really have a really like they they are kind of the bad guys. Yeah. In a, in a sense. Yeah. 
I think, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of, it's, it's the old thing of the Victor writes the, the history book. You see, and, you know, and, you know, the, the, the Israelites, the whole kind of thing come after Jesus, after the Egyptian um, sort of um, rulerships and everything else as well. But I mean, clearly, you, I mean, the, the fact that the Book of Toth is called the Book of Toth is a clear hint that we're going back to ancient Egypt as well. Not to the hieroglyphs, but the whole concept of ancient Egypt. I mean, also the fact he's using um, Egyptian names, isn't he, for the gods here as well. You see, so we, we are back in ancient Egypt, basically. You know, and if, it, if, if, the, you know, if it was from the, um, the Great Pyramid as well, which is in Egypt, so, you know, Egypt is a pretty common denominator here, isn't it? And is, it is it safe to say that he's uh, describing a spirituality which... Yeah from Egypt and kind of uh, is contained in the Bible as well? Yeah. In a, in a certain form? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it, we use the, the Gematria comes from the Hebrew alphabet. You, you know, and a, a, a lot of the words, you know, are from Hebrew, you know, and 777 is, is, is a Gematria, is, is all Hebrew, basically. So, you, you know, we're, you, you, we're always going back to those times. And because he knew his Bible inside out, because he was a, he was brought up with the Plymouth Brethren, and the only book you were allowed to read was the Bible. So, uh, and also the fact that all of the adepts in the um, uh, in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn in the Victorian times, they they were all um, they they were all. Um, extremely familiar with the Bible. You know, it was just a given thing that you would know your Bible and scripture and chapter and verse on a lot of things. So it's only these days that we don't know the Bible as well because we don't get it rammed down our throat the way we used to. So then he says the contents of the chapter are instructions to those who are to govern his name, his aeon, in his name. And these rulers will appeal, appeal to me, the B666, for a comment upon the text when need is. Um, that's, that's rather interesting English, isn't it? It's not easy if, if you're a natural English speaker. So um, Aeon, of course, we, that's the 21st um, card of the Tarot deck, isn't it? It used to be Judgment, and now it's that. His name... Um, you can turn that into Amen or Amun, um, which is 91, which is the number of uh, verse chapters in the Book of the Lies as well. So we're sort of, he's talking about ancient, an ancient period in, in history at the same time. And the B666, um, the beast is the last card. 666 is the number of um, the... Um, magic square of the sun as well. So there's a lot of so all of that is kind of solar energy that we're looking at as well. And he finishes that with Om Ha. Um, so so there are three chapters, okay, and there are sixty six verses in the first chapter. And the first verse starts had the manifestation of knew it, and in the Curley's commentary, he makes the point that new, so he breaks new it down into NV, new, which is 65, which is the number of Adonai, the number of the tarot is spelt in full, okay. Now the Sefer, Sefer, Sefer it's reference to Sefer Sephirot, the wake world, and 65 is also the number of pages in the manuscript as well, you see. So, you know, six, 66 verses, and then he goes straight into 65 for all of this here. And also, he just makes the point that 66 is the sum of the numbers 1 to 11, which, kind of, which makes it a holy number, and a lot of gematria attributions to 66, as I'm sure you all know. There's an interesting um, sort of codicil to all of this, because then he goes back to 56, so we have 65, 66, and then 56, which, of course, is the number of the minor arcana 
in the tarot. So he talks about 56 as Nu again. And he also talks about that as Noah, On, Oannes, Yona. And these are all mentioned in the death card. Okay. So he's, um, so this is probably the Derogensis, which is the, the 1923 commentary, which is a hell of a lot longer than, than the other commentaries and relatively short. There's sort of pages on each, on some of the verses, you see. So um, the other thing you should know about death is that in Freemasonry, death represents initiation as well. So this is, this is an instruction on initiation as much as anything else. Yes, Bart? But there is, now, the death card, I mean, the death card is in the Sea of Bino, and the death card represents Saturn, and, and so I find there's plenty of connections between the death card and the number 56. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I mean, part of this, 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 this workshop is, is to talk about how you can integrate your knowledge of Tara and the Book of Toss with the Book of the Law quite easily. It's not hard to do. You, you know, I mean, Crowley's kind of putting these things in there anyway. Also, 66 is the amount of, of books in the, uh, in the Bible. Yeah. Um, how many books are there in the Bible? We have to remind us. 66. 66. There are, you see. You, you, you know? Um, you know, rather than sort of hammering away at every single nuance of 65, 66, and 56. It's just that the way that he's put those three together is an important indication of how he works on things. So we had had the manifestation of Newit. So that we did, he did Newit first, New 65, and then he goes on to Had without the IT as well. Of course, the IT is 19, which is the number of Seth. Um, that's right, isn't it? 19? Oh, I get lost in these things. Well, 19 is the sun, isn't it? Oh, okay. So we're back onto that one then, aren't we? You see. So we're still talking about the sun. And he makes the point that had, so we, we remove the, the YT from Newt and had it. And then we end up with had. And of course, had is at the center of Abrahadabra. Okay. Which is the 11 lettered name mentioned by um, Elphus Levi as well. And then he goes on a slight digression with Abrasix, um, which comes to 365, which he also discusses in the Book of Toth, doesn't he? There's 360 and 365, if you remember. It's in one of the footnotes, basically. And you sort of think, why, why has he put that in there? And here it is in, in this. In, in the, we're still on the first verse, by the way. We haven't gone anywhere. First verse of the first chapter. Okay, then so a lot of this all comes from Crowley's commentary, and then he says, um, "Oh yes." Uh, so now we moved on to chapter seventeen, uh, verse seventeen, which is, "Behold, it is revealed by Iwas, the minister of Horpar Krat." Uh, in the text, he says Iwas equals seventy-eight, and this is in nineteen twenty-three. So he hasn't given up on the subject, has he? I'm on about behold. He starts this behold, which is normally a big deal in the Kabbalah. Yeah. I mean, the whole the yeah. whole tree of life was constructed on the word behold, I believe. No. Yes, and there's that lady who's done her own gematra. I forget her name. Um, I should Beshi. know her name. I apologize. <laughs> Beshibarashi. Beshibarash. Yes. Is it Ashi or Ash? Beshibarash. Um, Ash, Ashi. I don't know. Yes. Uh, um, but, yes, behold is a, is a key word in, in these things. So, in first of all, he says Iwas is 78. Uh, a lot of Thelemites will try and say, no, it isn't. He didn't mean it. Well, if he meant it in 1923 on the third commentary, then he's got a point to make, hasn't he? And then Horpar Krat is Harpocrates, which is the babe in the egg mentioned in that's, what, that's mentioned in Libra 4, 1, 8, in one of the atheists, probably the last one, Lil, I think. And, of course, it's also uh, mentioned in the full card in the commentary as well, you see. So we're still, 
the, the full so he's he's linking the full card with iwas and 78 here as well so he's pretty got the whole thing there hasn't he in one go 17 yeah. of course is, is zaddy isn't it if you go by um the zaddy hate switch as well so um chapter two which we'll come back to has 79 verses 79 has has Kabbalistic gematria significance as well, which I've forgotten right at this second, but of course it's one more than 79, isn't it? You see. So um, we'll come back to um, chapter two because there's some interesting verses that explicitly reference the Torah and all of these things. So chapter three has 75 verses. And the 75th verse is the ending of the words is the word Abrahadabra, which you've already had. And of course, that's related to the chariot. And the chariot is the letter of the chariot is Chet, Chet, which is 418, which takes us to Libra 418, which takes us to the Enochian ethers. He says, well, someone says, for I am perfect, being not and my number is nine by the false. But with the just, I am eight, and one in eight, which is vital, for I am none indeed. The Empress and the King are not of me, for there is a further secret. Because that seems more uh, relevant to things. We, we're kind of going into um, Book of Lies mode here, basically, aren't we? You know these things. So first of all, he says, I am perfect, being not. Um, L.A. is not. Okay. And so there's Al, which is a powerful sort of thing. And L.A. in Hebrew means not, you see. And then 61 is nothing or iron as well. And also A-N-Y -A means the self, the I. Okay. So iron is nothing, A-N-Y is the self, the ego, or, or other sort of descriptions of yourself that comes into all of this, and that's 61, okay? So um, you could add those two together to get 92, which is not a particularly useful number, is it? 91 definitely is. So, so then he says, my number is nine by the false. So he puts in there nine, the Hermit of Virgo and Mercury. Now there's an interesting thing because the, the full card and the Magus card kind of merge with each other in the Book of Tox, but the Book of Toth, don't they? There's this little bit of deliberate confusion between two, these two cards. So there's one's the expression of the other. Uh, nine is a sacred number in, Mason, in Freemasonry in particular. Okay. So this is, this is clearly sort of, this is how you break down the, uh, the text. And then it says, with the just, I am eight. Eight is just, justice, Libra, Mars. And of course, that's the letter L, which is the book of the law. And one in eight he describes, defines as Aleph. Well, Aleph is one. So that would be, so we have nine with the Hermit and the, and, and the Virgo and the Magus card with Justice and the Aleph in there as well. So you'd, probably, you'd have to go back to the adjustment card to sort of look back at his comments on those things. Is this making sense? If it doesn't, don't, um, it doesn't make sense to me half the time either, to be honest with you. So if it, does, if it doesn't entirely sort of click in your head, it, it's, it's probably normal. Then he says, which is vital, for I am none indeed. Well, none goes back to iron as well, and then he puts in Al or La in there, which is um, negation of things as well. So he's playing a sort of, a, he's doing a kind of word play on numbers and text here, isn't he, in the whole sort of thing. And then he switches, yes, Bart. 
And his use of capitals as well makes me think sometimes. Yes. Yes. And like when he says the, the former thing, he said, behold, yes. with an exclamation mark. And then yes. it started with it or something, but with a small letter. So yes. I think there is something more behind his use yes. of capital sometimes. Yes. Well, the exclamation mark is to do with the hunchback and the um, the other one. Um, basically, and, and hunchback and the soldier, isn't it? Soldier. Yeah, the hunchback is a question mark, and the soldier is an exclamation mark. You see, so he talks about this also in the Book of Lies at the beginning, doesn't he? In, in the introduction, but he also does in the Book of the Law. Eh? Yeah, so he's doing the same thing here. Okay, so but of course the Book of Lies comes after the Book of Law. You see, so he's he's and the, and there's the hunchback, the soldier, and the hunchback. Um, needs to be referenced within within all of these things as well. So you can't read any of this stuff in isolation. You have to go backwards and forwards between the texts. So then he talks about the empress, which is Dalit, the third number three, and the king, Hay. Well, the king Hay is um, the letter Hay, H E H. He's he's explicitly relating to the king there to the emperor card, isn't he? So that'd be the empress and the emperor Hay. So he hasn't done the switch here, has he? In this in this verse, <laughs> he's also talking about the king's chamber here as well. Basically, um, it's, all, it's all going on this. Yes, Bob. Well, that's that 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 Saudi switch. When I'm doing path working, and at a certain moment you come to the letter Saudi or Hey, yeah. I swear it is so confusing to read Crowley because. I mean, he talks about contradiction everywhere, but yeah. this is the part where he really contradicts himself. Eh? Yeah. And also, you have to read the the lovers' cast because he says in the comment on the commentary that the previous this next sentence negates the previous sentence, and there's also this thing that the, with um, we had a video we did ages ago, didn't we, about the, the makers' card about how things are flipped over and contradicted as well. So we're all in that area, basically, as well, you see. So you could say technically we're in the supernal triangle if you wanted to go down that route as well. Yes. You know, except he's not particularly going down the uh, the Kabbalistic tree of life route here, is he? So this is um, still, we're still in the second um, chapter. And then, and so he says, the Empress died three, the king, hey, is four and not of me. And then the comment is three plus four is seven. Okay, so seven is, I have to refer back, so I'm getting lost myself here, trying to do two things, is the chariot. Okay, so we're back to the chariot again, because that's number seven in the uh, Roman letters. Um, um... Yeah. If I would, I would see the empress and the king are not of me. What would occur to me is the empress is uh, one of the is, what is it primordial quintessences of being of the female of the the woman figure. Right. The emperor, the the height of what the the, the king, sorry, the, the emperor, yeah. he's one of the primordial quintessences of being of the father, which would mean he's referring to one of the hermaphrodite quintessences of being. Which yeah. is either the fool or the magus. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's All makes one. sense, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> He's also referring to the magical child, I guess, right? Uh, well, the magical child is the third chapter. Rahul Kirit. It's the union of the male with the female, or the point and infinity. And he says the explicit thing is the third, the third um, chapter. Is the union of the first two chapters. So there's the male and the female. Uh, I mean, Bart and I bashed to death the uh, three card readings, didn't we? This is, this is exactly the same thing. We had some good laughs doing those. Oh, absolutely. But you know, it's it's, it's a fundamental thing. You know, it, I mean, you, we we could you know every three card reading is a kind of commentary on what is going on here. Isn't it? So then we move on to verse 16 of chapter two. He says, I am the Empress and the Hierophant, thus 11 as my bride is 11. Now on the previous sentence that, that I put in here, because I haven't done the whole 
shebang. I've sort of cherry picked a little bit. He says, the Empress and the King are not of me. Okay. And he added three to the four to get seven. Now in this verse, I am the Empress and the Hierophant. The Empress is three and the Hierophant is six. Oh, hang on. So, well, no, he, the way he's done this is, um, oh, bloody hell. Uh, the Empress is Dallas, which is four. The Hierophant is Val, which is six. And that comes to ten. Yes, Bob? Isn't the Hierophant the fifth card after the Emperor, who is the fourth? Yes. Yeah, but, but, but whichever it's six. way you do it, you don't get 11. No, it... Unless you add the I. So I, the Empress, and the Hierophant will give you 11. So I am the Empress and the Hierophant, thus 11, as my bride is 11. 11, we've already established, is important um, because it's, 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 a ma it's a number of magic and change, and it's to do in particular with the first chapter of the Book of the Law, because 1 to 11 is 66, and 11 is the number of letters in Abra Hadabra. So we had the king and the empress in all of this. And now we're back to um, the empress and the hierophant with the bride. So we had the empress and the king, they're kind of married and the bride, um, she's marrying the hierophant in this one. It gets confusing, doesn't it? Um, so there's there's the derigensis comment um, which which I've put up here as well. So this doesn't particularly clarify things as far as I can tell either, because he actually calls it a riddle, which I will expound elsewhere. So it's not actually in this text by the looks of things. But a great angel in very sooth spake in mine ear the words of his book. So. Um, you can take that what you will. So in the old comment, he says, I am the Empress and the Hierophant. Thou, um, sorry, that shouldn't have been in there. So that's three plus four is, uh, so now he's saying three plus five is eight. And eight is nine, because both of the letters are in Abrahadabra equal 418 and Chet, and Chet is number eight. So he's actually going by the number eight here. Not, um, not the way I said it, okay? Even though he talks in there about the Empress and the King coming to seven, in the actual comments here, he's making it come to eight, just to make things a little bit more opaque than, than I thought. And he says the key word of all this ritual, so the ritual is Libra, eight, uh, Libra 418, which is the... Um, uh, the Enochian ethers, and because eight is not Leo strength, but Leo justice in the tarot. And it, the, the, the final comment in all of this, which is as far as I was going to go this evening, he said it should be noted that who was the oldest name that the Egyptians ascribed to the Sphinx at Giza, and the word means prince. So he talks about himself as a prince and priest and the prince prophet, doesn't he, and all of these things as well.